Hello and welcome everyone to another short video by Trades Tutor. This one is going to be on the products of combustion and we're dealing with propane. So let's get started. First thing we got to look at is the formula for the perfect combustion of propane. Sometimes they call this the stoichiometric or stoichiometric formula. I'm not sure which it is or how to pronounce that, but in any case, it's the perfect combustion formula which means that everything on the left-hand side of the equation mixes and combusts perfectly in the exact and right amounts to get whatever you have on the right-hand side of the equation. So what you start with is, we'll go to the left-hand and go to the right, what you start with is C3H8 or propane, and that's what we're dealing with, and then you add air, then you have a spark or some heat or something that ignites all that, it goes through the combustion process and out the other side we get the products of combustion. And we also get the one thing that we're looking for, looking to get, and that's heat or that's our energy that we're using in this whole process. So let's break this down even further. So first we start with propane. You can see how it's, uh, how it's bonded there, the eight hydrogens bond to the three carbons. What we end up with through the combustion process on the other side is, first of all, we deal with carbon dioxide. Okay, that's one of the products of combustion. Another one, H2O, which looks as if it's water, but in fact, what we're actually dealing with is not water, but water vapor, okay, because this is actually hot enough to stay in the vapor state. And then the final product of combustion is nitrogen. All right, You can see it there. Now note that nitrogen goes in on the left and comes out on the right. Nothing happens. It's an inert gas. Nothing, uh, it doesn't do anything except in the end of the day take up heat. So there's your formula. Now when we find out um, products of combustion, what this is going to be based on is in flow rate. And that flow rate can be in cubic feet or cubic meters. For our purposes, we're going to deal with cubic feet in this, in this example that we're going to get to in a minute. Okay? So what we want to try to find out is, if we send a certain amount of propane in, how much of the products of combustion do we get on the other side? And that relies on the ratio. So if we bring all these down here, what you can see is the ratio is for one C3H8, or one propane, you get three carbon dioxides, you get four water vapors, and you get 20 nitrogens. Okay, so that's how the whole process works. That's how you calculate what you're going to get out, out the other side based on what you put in. So right now we're always based on one, but we're going to have more than one cubic foot of flow rate. We're going to have to calculate that. So the easiest way to do this and to, to uh, take a look at how this works is to go to an example. So what are the expected products of combustion from a 200,000 BTU an hour boiler using natural gas as the fuel? So before we even start calculating, we have to figure out our flow rate. And there it is. There's your formula. Flow rate is input divided by calorific value. The input we have in this question is 200,000 BTUs an hour. And the calorific value we're going to use for propane is 2,500 BTUs per cubic foot. So the flow rate we're going to get from that is 80 cubic feet per hour. Now we can just use our numbers that we had in the ratios to work with that. So we can put this up. There you go. If you started with 80 cubic feet of propane and you get it three times as much uh, flow rate of carbon dioxide, well you get three times 80 or 240 cubic feet. The water vapor is four times as much, or 320 cubic feet. And the nitrogen is 20 times as much, or 1,600 cubic feet. So there you have it. That is the perfect combustion formula for propane. And we use that to calculate the uh, products of combustion for propane. I hope this helped you guys. And um, take care and hope to see you later.